This party has just reinstalled Fallout 3 with all of the freaking mods. Would you like to play with me? Ooh, that is much better. Yeah, I can put this down for a while. Hello everyone and welcome to another one of our Lazy Swim Deck Reviews, the series where Scotty and I take the time to go through pre-con decks, read out the cards inside, give you an idea of how strong they are, and if they synergize with a given commander, the cuts to the deck, and how good a product is straight out of the box. At the end, we score each deck instead of an expansion against each other out of 10, so grab your favorite drinks, sit down, lay back, and relax as we dive into this review. I am your host, Vlad, and I'm here joined by Scotty. Hi Scotty, thank you very much for that intro. And today we are reviewing the third of the Fallout decks, the commander decks that were released with the Fallout expansion or universes beyond. Today we're looking at Hail Caesar, it's a Mardo deck. So that's gonna be very interesting. Now these decks are really cool. They tend to have a lot more cards than the usual pre-con decks that you'll find in all expansions. You usually have between 10 on average to 15 cards sometimes. So this one, for example, has 37 new cards, a deck box, 10 double-sided tokens, a foil etch display commander, a life wheel, a strategy insert, and a run for card. So 37 new cards is great. And of course, there's always the booster sample for the collector pack. And other than that, let's dive into this. So far, I must say, compared to, well, LCI, so the Lost Governors of Excellent decks, uh, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Funny enough, those decks were much more synergizing and more stronger. And I think the, you know, the Mutant Menace is definitely fun, and there's a lot of potential there with decent cards. But the uh, Science one is still a little, was a little bit underwhelming, a little bit of uh, Jack of all trades, and really no synergy. Also, I figured out why they did the universes beyond because from my understanding one what is it because it does is it they don't only and in the meantime while I'm talking I'll show you the contents of the box they don't only uh, chase after specific franchises themselves but it's also other franchises that tie in themselves with um, products that are very popular so for example fallout at the moment they're making a new show in case you didn't know it's going to be on amazon and they're pushing with xbox as well they're going to have a new xbox series x that's going to be fallout themed and all of that there's no new video game that i am aware of so it's just a tie in with this series so they're capitalizing on that and that's why very likely that they decided to go this route so that's it and we have the little tokens as usual and the cardboard cutout we have the life wheel and it's very nice it's in green colors anyway just like in the pip in the game then you have the little insert which I really quite like. It's always nice to have. It always gives you an idea of, well, how the deck synergizes, plays, and the choices behind the commander, and a little bit of an intro and fluff about the commander proper. So this is the son of Mars, Caesar. And um, yeah, it's been crazy. I used to love playing well, Fallout ages ago, of course, and I, funny enough, reinstalled just recently Fallout with uh, New Vegas as well, and I went and installed the Tales of Two Wastelands uh, mod because I re realized that the usual one wasn't working um, the way that I used to mod before because of the new OS. So yeah, uh, I don't know when I'll ever, if I'll ever have time, but it's cool I have it there. Anyway, let's go and dive into the collector sample we have sierra nuka's biggest one is a three four human citizen and cost four is white it's a legendary creature the nuka call a challenge whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player put up quest counter on sierra and create a food token and whenever you sacrifice the food take a creature you control gets plus x plus x until the end of turn where x is the number of quest counters on sierra so that's really really good but at the same time it would be a very strong if they had done uh, for every single creature that does that and then we have the mantle of the ancients which is really really cool and it's um uh now our enchantment that costs five with two white pips and it, you enchant a creature you control and when it enters the battlefield return a number of target aura or equipment cards that could be attached to enchanting creature from your graveyard to the battlefield attached to the enchanted creature so it's like a magnet that draws everything out of the graveyard onto your um creature which is really really strong and so you should get plus one plus one for each or equipment attached to it so this is uh, definitely i don't know if this is the deck but this is definitely for an, an enchantment uh, slash equipment deck so that's going to be insane on that anyway we have here caesar legion's emperor which is the commander of the deck 
as says Mardo. And uh, yeah, let's dive in and see what Caesar does. Whenever you attack, you may sacrifice another creature. When you do, choose two. Either you create two 1-1 one, one red and white soldier creature tokens with haste that are tapped and attacking. Okay, so you sack a creature to have two, and you can sack one of the tokens, for example, to get an extra one. Uh, I, uh, basically, you always sack one, get two, sack one, get two, etc., etc., etc. Or you draw a card and you lose a life, so that's very, very strong. And then Caesar deals damage equal to the number of creature tokens you control to target an opponent. So this is very much uh, token interaction and creature sacking, as, especially if it's tokens. It's a 4-4, four, four, only costs four with a Marty cost. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. I really like it. It looks like it will be uh token deck i would reckon so let's see how that goes into the plan then we have some robot copy tokens a soldier the white ones the red white one the white one the red white one the foods some treasure of course and some more human soldiers some junk and some treasure so that's it for the tokens and the display commander and let's dive into the deck proper as usual, if you're new to the channel, first off, welcome. And also, we are going to be looking at, if, if, if I can find the, the pool tab in the meantime, <laughs> we're going to be looking at the commander as is, right? So around Caesar, this is how we review the deck. And uh, that's that. I know we are a bit far behind on these reviews. As usual, we state that we've been working so hard on pushing out our own car marketplace exclusive for the united kingdom and you can find a link in the description down below if you want to check it out let's dive into we have mr house president and ceo so he's the president and ceo zero four legendary artifact creature human that costs mardo whenever you roll a four or higher you create a three three colorless robot artifact creature token if you roll a six or higher instead you created that token and the treasure token and then for a four and tap you roll six sided die plus an initial six sided die for each mana from treasure spent to activate this ability so very much non consequential to this deck uh if you're playing caesar it's a completely different yeah just just a completely different um general it has nothing to do with that so i hope they don't split the deck too much Ardesh, the founder of first creature it's a one four human soldier cost three it's white it's legendary it has an enlist uh, as this creature attacks you may tap a non-attacking creature you control without summoning sickness and when you do its power is added to this creature until the end of turn and whenever a creature you control attacks if it's enlisted a creature this combat that creature that attacked gains double strike until the end of turn and the creature's power is four greater than draw a card that is really really good you get to enlist for example with him you tap i don't know caesar you get to enlist the power it becomes a five four and then it becomes a double striker and also he draws a card so that's insanely good doesn't have any synergy with caesar yet we don't know it's too early to tell but in and of itself it's a creature buffer so it stays in the middle so far battle at hoover dam is a cost four is an enchantment and it's white as it enters the battlefield choose ncr or legion so i'm now the one of those choices ncr at the beginning of your end step return target creature card with mana value three or less from graveyard to the battlefield with a finality counter okay and which means that if it dies you get to exile afterwards and then legion whenever a creature you control dies you put two plus one plus one counters attack a creature you control so the legion part definitely synergizes with the commander and then the sacking part as well because you can bring creatures back from the graveyard so definitely it's synergistic it's an enchantment though it was there overseer vault 76 i like the the jacket i wish i had one like that that was really cool also love the hair has a three three human advisor that costs three this white legendary creature its ability is first contact whenever overseer or another creature with power three or less so this is going to be maybe weenies as well i can see a theme here so three or less enters the battlefield on your control you put a quest counter on it and at the beginning of combat on your turn you may remove three uh quest counters from among permanents you control when you do you put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control and you gain vigilance until the end of turn um it's a buffer it's a boar buffer you need the counter in ability so that's not too bad because um 
you know, it seems like maybe that would be the theme and you keep putting the counters and then you just remove three and so on and so forth. I don't reckon you'll have proliferate, but it's a buffer. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, I guess, synergistic as well. Next, we have Securitron Squadron. It's a T2 robot and that is white and it's an artifact creature, it costs two. It has quad three. As an initial cost, it casts a spell, you may pay three generic and a number of times. When this creature enters the battlefield, you create that many tokens for that many times you paid the cost and it has vigilance. So whenever a creature token enters the battlefield and control, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So that is very synergistic and very good. Then we got Sierra that we saw earlier. So uh, sacrificing a food token, I don't know how that's gonna go. It all depends. I mean, um, yes, the dealing combat damage to a player, if you go wide, which usually token decks can go, uh, it shouldn't be um, too hard. And then, as I said before, the only problem is that it would have been nice to have food counters on the side. Again, this is more of a buffer um, and not just one full counter on combat phase, but you know, it's in the middle. I think it's an okay card. They are better to buff, especially with counters and with tokens. So maybe swap that up. Vault 75 Middle School. It's cost four and it's a saga. It has two white pips. And the first step, excel all creatures with power four or greater. Great for your deck. And then for uh, the, the other steps, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Very, very nice. It's a removal and a buffer at the same time. Very, very, very nice. And I really like it. And then we got Yes Man, personal Securitron. It's a 2 2 robot, legendary artifact creature, costs three, it's white. And you tap it, target opponent gains control of Yes Man. And when they do you draw two cards and you put a quest counter on yes man activating this on, only on your turn and then for wild card when it leaves the battlefield its owner creates a tapped one one white soldier creature token for each quest counter on it now if you know me by now i don't like giving advantages to my opponents so that is something that i would cut on top of that i don't really know yes it has a little bit of synergy that's why i put it there but realistically it's not really because the extra token that you get is meh and joining the cards is great but there are better ways to draw cards than that one. Then we have VATS. So that is the Ball Tech Assisted Targeting System. <laughs> That's a really cool uh, ability in game. If you ever played this game, it uh, basically it's freeze time and you get to choose whatever part of the body or your opponent you want to target and shoot at or aim at and uh, smash at. And then you just go for it. And yeah, you have a 95% chance, 55% chance, 82% chance and so on and so forth. So that's really, really cool. Well, let's see how it works. It's uh, cost four, it's an instant, has split second. It's black with two black pips. Split second means that as long as the spell is on a cast uh, stack, no other spells can be cast or activated abilities can be activated that aren't mana abilities. This means that it, that's it. After that, nothing else. Choose any number of target creatures with equal toughness. Destroy the chosen creatures. So I think I, we had a discussion in our Discord and we have a car market Discord for, for ourselves. And um, on our Discord, I, I was saying how cool this would have been if it had been more randomized, maybe with a D20 die or something like that. I think this would have been a, a more flavorful card, but I can see where they're going. And it's always nice to have um, the ability to destroy more. Uh, so yeah, why not? It's an instant, it removes stuff. It's not bad, it's a bit expensive, but you choose any number of creatures. So with, with equal toughness, which means it can be a board wipe for those nasty creatures or just a singular wipe for those really, really, really strong ones. And so we have Westland Raider. It's a 4-3 human mercenary, and it costs four to black pips, squad two. So when it enters the battlefield, you can pay two to as many times as you want. You carry token copies of it. And when it enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature meaning that if you put it in play with a two, three, four copies, then each player sacrifices more creatures. And again, tokens can be then used for Caesar. Granted, it's each player, so you gotta be careful. But when it enters the battlefield, it means that you can sacrifice it itself. So it can be replacing itself as well. Also, it's a four, three, so it goes above most of the things that we discussed so far. It is kind of synergistic, so we'll leave it here. Mysterious Strangers, the three, two human rogue, it's red and with two red pips. <laughs> oh, pips, by the way. Yeah. And it has flash when it's this battlefield for each graveyard uh, with an instant sorcery card in it. Exile target instant sorcery card from that graveyard. And if two or more cards are exiled this way, choose one of them at random and copy it. You may cast a copy without paying its mana cost. Okay. So, yes, not bad. 
a very randomized thing and again this is a, a more on the fun thing so if you want a fun deck keep it if you want a more well tactical deck i would say don't keep it also it doesn't really synergize with the commander then we have Potter ganger as a 2-2 human rogue that we saw earlier i think it was in the first deck that we opened in the sample it's a human rogue cost three it's red squad two so again copy it and enters battlefield destroy up to one target artifact so it's an interesting way to destroy again you're getting value out of creating tokens and then those tokens can be sacked or done more abilities with and artifacts are so strong in commander as you well might know that it's really good so next we have rose cutthroat also it's a 2-2 so good in your deck cutthroat raider is a 3-2 uh, legendary creature robot uh, artifact so it costs four it has two red pips first strike raid at the end of combat on your turn if you attack this turn create a junk token for each opponent you attacked and whenever you sacrifice the junk you get to add uh red so that's not bad and also give me a sec in case you don't remember a junk says that you tap sack it and exile the top card of your library you may play that card this turn is only only as a sorcery so not only do you get some card advantage in red uh but you also do get some mana so that is actually pretty nice um yeah you get more tokens does it synergize with the commander not really but it's in the middle it's more of a useful tool uh thrill skill disciplines a three two human mercenary it costs three it's red it has squad one and discard a card and when it dies you create a junk token again more junk tokens it does synergize for that part uh the squad part and again when it dies you create a junk token which is great because it replaces itself um so yeah it's nice and then you can bring them back hopefully more than just a couple of uh ways that, especially because black is in here and Marty, so you could have reanimate next we have wild wasteland with a ufo here and it costs a three it's red it's an enchantment skip your draw step and at the beginning of your app keep you exile the top two cards of library you may play those cards this turn and that's not bad you get to draw an extra card i would rather go for axion uh, arena here um because this showing your opponents what you have in, in your hand basically um but it's a fun card i understand where they're coming from it's very red enchantment <laughs> i would rather swap it out though then we have boomer scrappers a one one human soldier it costs three with ractus in the cross so whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks you lose one life create a one uh, in a junk token okay so you create those junk tokens again as you deploy from the top of your library and then whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield put a plus one plus one counter on boomer scrapper so this could be very 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 strong and very synergistic right because in the end we are going to buff up not only because we scrap the tokens like junk treasure and so on and so forth but also the creature tokens so this can grow out to be significantly big and a threat you got to remember though it doesn't have trample so unless you give it something to well be annoying it's just gonna be blocked by a simple one one so you gotta keep that in mind also remember that the more junk you do have the more you play with the top card of your library exposed so yes it's synergistic but be careful on how many of these effects you have then we have colonel autumn it's a two three human soldier and it costs three and it's ores of it has life link so that's great and has exploit which means when this is battlefield it's like a creature and a uh, creatures you control have exploit as well so long as they're legendary and whenever creature you control exploits a creature you put a plus one plus one counter on each creature control very 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 strong especially in a token go wide deck like this one so that is a must keep then we have this demo now freedom's edge is a three four human rogue that costs four it's boros it has vigilance and when it attacks target creature card in your graveyard that's an artifact or that has a mana value of three or less gains escape until the end of turn escape cost is equal to its mana cost plus exile two other cards from your graveyard so that's not bad uh, yeah it's it's good you know you have to attack with her it's it's a vigilance creature therefore it's a bit annoying uh that you know it's it's a small creature you have to attack with it to be able to create the effect but if you protect it in some way or another then you're going to be able to get those creatures back that you sacrifice you remember the tokens they do go to your graveyard but as soon as they hit your graveyard they disappear so you won't be able to bring them back so that's something to keep in mind next we have elder 
Arthur Max. And then also every time you bring something back, because there are so many ETBs in this synergies and this deck, that's very, very good. Elder Arthur Maxon is a 4-2 human knight. So they cost three with Ors of Anacost, and it's a legendary creature. Creatures tokens you control have training, meaning that whenever a creature token you control attacks with another creature with power greater, it gets a plus one plus one counter. And then that which is very, very good in this deck. And then blind betrayal, sacrifice another creature. Elder Arthur Maxon gains indestructible until the end of turn. So again, the synergy with the commander is very strong. And the fact that it's a 4-2, it apps that little ante um, and making them stronger. And they can buff each other up. It's very good. Kellogg Dangerous. Mine, I wonder if it comes in a box. It's a 3-2 human mercenary. It costs 3 and it's Raxus in the cost. It is a legendary creature and it has first strike and haste. And whenever it attacks, you create a treasure token. So more token generation. Sacrifice 5 tokens. There are treasure tokens. You can control the target creatures as long as you control Kellogg. Activate only as a sorcery. So this could be really, really, really annoying. But this is more on the side of the token generation rather than um, the uh, well, the whole creature token generation, right? So it is interesting, but it goes more on, um, yeah, I think in, on the outside, it's more of an idea of, you know, for example, Mr. House and other stuff. So it doesn't really synergize with Caesar necessarily um, because treasure tokens are great. And absolutely, you can keep it just for that. So of course, um, you know, depending on how you want to build the deck, this could be a keep or not, but in and of itself, it does not synergize necessarily the commander. Then we have McCready, Lamplight Mayor is a one, three human advisor. It costs two, so it's always off. And whenever it you control with power two or less, um, attacks against Skulk until the end of turn, meaning that it cannot be blocked by Christian's Great Power. So great for your deck. Although I must say that are one, two, three, so far three. Yep, three on one side, four, five creatures only so far. So you gotta be careful and mindful of that, but that's very good in the deck. Whenever creature with power four or greater attacks you, this control loses two life, you gain two life. That is a good deterrent and it's cheap and I like it and you can always buff it up. So yeah, why not keep it? Uh, the Nipton Lottery, of course, it depends on how you build the deck, but we'll get to it at the end. The Nipton Lottery is a sorcery. It costs four. Ractus and it costs. Choose a creature at random. You may gain control of that creature until the end of turn. And tap it against haste until the end of turn. Then destroy all other creatures. Yeah, no. Um, this is randomized control and it's really annoying. There are better things that you can do with sorceries and uh, that's definitely not something I would do. But it's a cute idea. Paladin, I mean, this is more for fun. If you want to go for fun, keep it. And I'm not going to say, you know, in the end, you play your deck as whatever well you want if you want to win it's a different thing paladin elizabeth taggarty is a three two human nine that is a legendary creature cost three as boros has battalion whenever it on and at least two other creatures attack you draw a card then you may put a creature card with mana value x or less from your hand onto the battlefield tap where x is its power which again if you can buff it up and there are some ways of buffing it up then you can definitely do it and i will put it as a synergy because again the more tokens you create the more you can trigger that ability volt 11 is Borders Dilemma. It's a saga. Costs four with the words of in a cost. For each opponent, you create a 1 1 human soldier creature token. So you get to create maximum of three. And then for the other two staffs, each player secretly votes for up to one creature. Then those votes are revealed. And if no creature got votes, each player draws a card. Otherwise, destroy each creature with the most votes or tie for most votes. It's an interesting way. Again, I would like a bit more certain in my thing, but this is a very fun enchantment. So same thing as the nip Nipton Lottery. It's up to you if you want to keep it, but if you want a more performing deck, I would remove it. Eddie Monsum I bought is a 2-1 robot that costs a generic. It's a legendary artifact creature has flying and its ability is whenever it attacks if the number of attacking creature is greater so you attack sorry not when eddie attacks if it's greater than the number of quest counters on eddie you put a quest counter on it and then you two you tap two sack it draw a card then draw an additional card for each quest counter it's self-replacing you can sacrifice it by itself it does not have um, necessarily synergies here but you can then hopefully bring them back it does not synergize here it's more of a draw it's cute and it's flying and yeah maybe you can copy it with other things but you know it's up to you if you want to keep it 
If you want to go more towards the commander though, I would remove it. Dazzle and Mire, of course. And then we have Diamond City. And that's just Battlefield with Shield Counter on it. And if it will be dealt damage or destroy, remove a Shield Counter on it. And then tap to add one generic and then tap to move a Shield Counter from it to a target creature and activate only if two or more creatures enter Battlefield under your control this turn, which is fairly easy with your commander. Then we have Captain of the Watch. is a 3 3 human soldier that costs a whooping six with two white pips, has vigilance, and other creatures you control soldier creatures get plus one plus one in vigilance so yeah you're going to create a lot of those ones and when it enters the battlefield you create three one one white soldier creature tokens now it is a good card but it's fairly expensive for what it's trying to do and there are better color combination cards to buff up your tokens if you want to go the route of tokens that don't require so much um well mana to do what it's trying to do but at the same time for six you're basically getting a six six you know six power on the board and on top of that so an anthem effect for your soldiers and a vigilance effect so it really depends on how you build your deck it is synergistic though and trapping maneuver is an instant it costs four and it's white target player sacrifices an attacking creature you create x11 white soldier creature tokens where x is that creature's toughness so again more soldier tokens if you want to go that round that's very nice i like it and then we have our of reckoning of course sorcery convoke it costs seven with three white pips and destroy all known token creatures so again if you want to go the route of the token creatures absolutely you've got it and um, yeah this is a great great little way to wipe the board keeper of the accord is a three four human soldier and costs four and as wide at the beginning of each opponent end step if that player controls more creatures than you you get to create a wise soldier creature token and at the beginning of each opponent's end step if the player controls more lands than you may search a library for a planes card put it on the battlefield tab then shuffle it is a basic planes card though so keep in mind if you're not playing a lot of basic planes cards this is a mute point on the second part the first part is still efficient and it is synergistic so i like it marshall's anthem is an enchantment that costs four with two white pips and it has multi kicker of two with uh yep yeah, uh, with a white and a generic and creatures you control get plus one plus one and whenever it enters battlefield it return up to x target creature cards from greater to the battlefield where x is the number of time it was kicked so very good one i really like that one so that's something that will keep marshall coop and costs x and two white pips is a sorcery you get to create more soldier creature tokens if access five or more destroy all other creatures so very very good board wipe and at the same time way to generate tokens I really like it secure the wastes it's an instant it costs x and one white you create x one one white warrior creature tokens so because now we're moving a little bit more towards what the commander is trying to do which is really really good and ways to buff it so we're going a little bit more synergistic you have to keep in mind that if there are no ways to protect your board state though um, which is something that these kind of decks, you know, creature heavy decks, token creature decks, uh, or go white decks are always susceptible to. A board wipe is going to destroy you, so you gotta be really, really careful. Oh, we have the black market reprinted here. That is a lovely, lovely card from the Mercani Masks block. And this is an enchantment that costs five or two black pips when it. A creature dies you put a charge counter on it and then i'm beginning of pre-combat main phase so the first main phase you add one black mana for each charge counter on it um freaking amazing this is great 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 value for your deck so absolutely especially because you're going to be generating so many creatures and sacrificing so many creatures or them dying this is a wonderful little card to have and then we have lethal scheme it's an instant has code invoke it costs four to black pips and destroy target creature or planeswalker is creature that convoke lethal scheme connives meaning that you draw a card discard a card if you discard a non land card you put a plus one plus one counter very very lovely removal and it's really good in this deck so more removal if you add some targeted removal as well and maybe a couple of board wipes this deck would be strong but again be careful with the board wipes you have one here that protects your tokens in a way stolen strategy it's an enchantment it costs five and it's red at the beginning of your upkeep exile the top card of each opponent's library until the end of turn you may cast spells from among those exiled cards and you may spend mana as though you were mana of any color to cast the spells again if you want to play with the top card revealed great if not there are better ways to draw 
and I'd rather just use the enchantment slot a bit more intelligently here. But you know, one of them might be okay. Anguish I'm making in is gets a reprint, so that's very nice. And more target removal, and it's non non permanent, so very very good. Assemble the legion. Enchantment costs five. It's Boris. At the beginning of your upkeep, you put a muster counter on this, and then you create a one one red and white soldier creature token with haste for each muster counter. Very very good, and a definite annoying part of this tank. Then we have Fervent Charge, cause Mardu and one generic. Whenever creatures you control attacks, so any a creature it gets plus two, plus two until the end of turn, which means that it buffs all your little creatures for such a little amount that is going to be insanely good then we have ruinous ultimatum of course you see the reprint here with the martyr callers here but it's a very hard cast as you can see destroy all non land permits your opponent's control it's a wipe i guess <laughs> you know but it's good because it's all your opponents and it's very late in game one board wipe like this wouldn't be too bad actually so why not um oh i just realized the secure the waste is actually an instant as well so that buffs it up even more that's great then we have canyon slow okay cliff top retreat dragon skull summit um i mean i like that they they put these lands back in so yeah they've uh, introduced again the isolated chapter i'm going to skull summit these are good lands but they've gone a step backwards i think from the lost cameras of next where they had better lands so definitely it's 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 okay and the temples are just meh and i wonder when they'll start importing the triumphs and other cards that well are so sorely needed because well let's be honest not everybody wants to invest in a huge amount and these are supposed to be the more uh, premium universes beyond decks so yes it's not as premium as the um, you know commander masters but still those land bases were atrocious so let's not go there okay <laughs> okay we get gary clone of course you get gary oh my god it's a one three human citizen it costs two it's white and it has squad two and whenever it attacks this creature you control name gary clone gets plus one plus zero it's okay it busts itself up it uh, creates more of itself and again you can use of a caesar and um yeah why not it's 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 an interesting way uh to do things and i'm wondering though and here maybe somebody can tell me in the comments down below if i'm mistaken but whenever you attack you may sacrifice another creature it doesn't say any number of creatures so you can only if from my understanding sacrifice one other creature and then when you do you choose so you can't really sack that many creatures you can only do once from my understanding you can't do it 70 or infinite amount of times it can still skyrocket but at the same time yeah you got to be mindful of how many creatures you create and what advantages they give this only buffs itself and its clones so if you have better it's better next we have butch deloria tunnel snake that's a 2-2 human rogue it costs two is black it's a legendary creature with menace and stunner snake rules is its ability whenever it attacks it gets plus one plus one until the end of turn for each other rogue and or snake you control okay so 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 far it's only two other rogue cards and yeah the soldiers humans hmm i don't know that that's really really good i think that's again limiting the buffing ability and they're better and then uh, for two you put a mana scanner on another target creature it becomes a rogue in addition to its other types that's not bad you get to transform it again tokens interaction yes but they're better if you have better use them ruthless rat rat there's a 2-2 rat mutant that costs three with two black pips it's a squad exile four cards from a graveyard okay well you're gonna be sacrificing and i don't see a lot of ways to put them back so that's that's a good way to use your graveyard and it gets menace so it's annoying you can buff it up is a 2-2 definitely annoying and it allows you to have some synergies with those cards that you cannot bring back from the graveyard then we have boon nova guard is a 3-3 three, three human soldier that costs three it has boars and it costs reach and lifelink that's a legendary creature and one for my baby whenever you attack with two or more creatures put two quest counters on it and when you do it deals combat damage no damage equal to the number of quest counters on it up to one target creature unless that creature's controller has it deal damage damage to them very 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 nice and um yeah so whenever you attack with two or more creatures it means that you don't have to attack with it you can keep buffing it you can definitely do that with all your tokens and they die they buff him and then he attacks and then he deals a lot of damage this can grow up this 
proportionally. So definitely uh, keep a very good card. Legate Lanius or Legate Lanius. Caesar's Ace is a 2-2 human soldier that costs four with Ragdos in the cost. It has, it's a legendary creature. It has Decimate. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a tenth. <laughs> oh yes, because it's a tax. Of the creatures they control, round it up. Whenever an opponent sacrifices a creature, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Oh, that is a cool way. It's a very annoying edict. Um, yeah, why not? It buffs itself up. It's a fun one. This actually I would keep, not only because it's fun, but I think it could be really annoying. And uh, this it's not really a board wipe, but it kind of is. And it does synergize because it's 2-2, two -two, it, it gets counters. So why not? White Glove Gourmand is a 2-2 two -two human noble. It costs four and it has ours of any cost. When it is battlefield, you create two 1-1 one -one white human soldier creature tokens. At the beginning of your end step, if another human died and you control this turn, you create a food token and you have so many humans so that's very very good oh the charisma bubblehead so it is a normal bubblehead but it's second ability you get to create x11 one, one white soldier creature tokens where x is the number of bubbleheads you control activate all the sorcery then we get the luck bubblehead which is the roll six x six sided die and where x is the number of bubbleheads you control and then you create a tap treasure token for each even result if you roll six exactly seven times you win the game so this could definitely be a really powerful powerful card and um with mr house and some um, of those uh, baldur's gate cards because those are the die matter cards but this is definitely not something that we care about this could be okay but realistically just create a token for 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 four and it costs three to put in place so that's seven there are better ways to use them i'm a little bit underwhelmed by these bubble heads i must say but yeah this one this luck one definitely not in this deck but you could do some shenanigans with some cards next we have the survivor med kit it's an artifact costs one generic for one generic and tap it choose one that hasn't been chosen so you can only use it three times you first draw a card or create a food token or target player loses all counters you sacrifice this so that's nice it's um it's a hint also at the um, counter stack so this funny enough if you're playing the rad deck, so the Mutant Menace, I would put this one in myself because if you get to too many rad counters, you could fetch this somehow. That would be really good. Um, yeah. Next, we have, oh, Passionate Orator. It's a uh, Orator. Orator? Orator? I don't know. I know the, the Latin one, but anyway. It's a 2-2 two -two human cleric. It costs two. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under control, gain a life. Very, very good, especially because of how many creatures will be spawning. I would keep this, actually. Intangible Virtue, of course. Enchantment creatures tokens you control get plus one plus one have vigilance very very good keep absolutely bastion of remembrance is an enchantment costs three it's black whenever it's a battlefield you get to create a human soldier when a creature control dies which again you can do fairly easily um but just attacking or just sacking or an opponent lose a life you gain a life so that's also very nice you're going here the sack outlet so yeah we'll get to the end and we'll disregard everything else afterwards deadly dispute of course an instant it costs two it's black in addition to Cost dispel, you sacrifice an artifact creature, draw two cards, create a treasure token, and this is an insane instant. I cannot stress that enough and allows you to enable some shenanigans so it's like a four for one <laughs> sometimes very 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 good card morbid opportunist one three human rogue costs three whenever one or more other creatures die draw a card and this ability triggers only once each turn and um, there are better ones there are much better ones that do this exact thing and are not limited to only once this turn also uh, yeah it's it's synergistic let's let's be honest but it's not something that works. next we have pitiless plunderer as a one for human pirate of course it's here and i like it that it's uh with this illustration it's very creepy and it's cost four it's black whenever a creature you control dies you create a treasure token very very good again now we're going in the aristocrats aspect so the past few cards have been aristocrats which means you sack and you gain life or advantages for sacking your creatures and especially your tokens which is the aspect that i was thinking about how you could build this deck it has synergy with the deck and i would definitely keep it if you're going that way generals enforcer as a two three human soldier i love the illustration by the way it costs uh orzov and it 
legendary humans you control have indestructible very very good there are quite a few of those including your commander and then for four with ors of exile target creature card from graveyard if it was a creature card sorry target card from graveyard if it was a creature card you create a one one white human soldier creature token very very good and again more of this please because then you can do stuff with the cards that you can't bring back heroic reinforcements <laughs> of course sorcery costs four as boros create two one one white soldier creature tokens until the end of turn creatures you control get plus one plus one and gain haste add there are better sorceries out there but not bad uh wear and tear destroy target artifact or destroy target enchantment at instant speed with boros in the costs or either side and um, yeah this time and, and artifact there are better again removals but if you need to keep it keep it then we have your cane signet oh skull clamp always always good to have very very good especially in this kind of deck because you can basically put it on a one one it dies when it dies it triggers something and so on and so forth so that's and you also draw cards so that's very good soul ring oh talismans i love this talisman I, I really like the um, the illustrations of these talismans then we have the ash baron command tower evolving wilds memorial to glory that allows you to create soldier tokens and then we have myriad landscape nomad outpost oh my god these things are useless path of ancestry tainted field and then tepeak their morphic expanse and then we go on to how many planes is five planes and four swamps and a five mountains so let's review the deck proper now the deck is synergistic it's not as synergistic as the mutant menace one at one point it just veers off into certain things as we've just discussed so the idea of the deck is simple this guy is is basically useless in in this deck but the commander is this wants you to create tokens and to do stuff with those tokens and that is very much the way that i would go about doing things not necessarily etbs too much but the tokens and buffing up those tokens and you know making those tokens insanely powerful and or what you can do when to sack those tokens or we bring them back so on and so forth and how you can buff it and since it's human and soldiers as well there are a lot and if i'm not mistaken arwen for example the arwen deck um it wasn't arwen it was uh Eowyn's deck in uh, the lord of the rings expansion also had a similar theme in the end the theme was similar and i believe that that's the way that you can go to be aggressive now compared to the science deck though it does things a little bit better you have a lot more synergy and your cards and a little less scatterbrain the removal it's doing a little eh because you do want the source to plowshares you know the XL effects it would be nice so there are things you can remove here and they're cheap changes and uh, yeah here you have some really good enchantments and some you can just swap up so that's not too bad uh, sorcery level I would say definitely you're fine there are better sorceries to be swapped in and artifacts wise you're fine as well because to be fair the cost on this deck doesn't necessarily require you to ramp it's more and here comes the important part is the ability to buff up and especially protect your cards so um, anthem effects and um, you know banner effects and all that kind of stuff that would be really really good tribal effects as well depending on how you build the deck will be also very very good and more importantly protection effects which there are quite a few in white now and that's something that i sorely lack in to protect your side of the board that's it that said i think i would give this a uh, seven out of ten compared to everything else it is just down low aggressive and even though it's not a 7.5 i think it's still very very decent as out of the box the tools that they give you extra are not too many and it still can do quite a lot of damage and be very annoying just as is and i believe that this is a more simpler kind of approach of the deck so um i like this and uh, definitely I would advise you playing this. I think the Mutant Menace one is going to be the more fun one and the, the more sought after one, no matter what. But this is still very good. And there's a lot of synergies with, with other previous decks, pre con decks that have been released in the expansions in the past 12 months, for example. So if you have some of those, you can just swap some stuff in and you're good to go. Anyway, if you don't agree with any of the things that we said, or if you have any additions or missed something, 
please let us know in the comments down below as we read and reply to every single one of them and that's it from sky now we thank you so much for uh, watching our videos if you've enjoyed them make sure to thumbs up and subscribe to our channel as it does help small channels like ours a lot remember if you're from the united kingdom and you're looking to buy and sell magic the gathering cards you have now a DJ exclusive uk car marketplace very friendly sharks that's us and i'll leave a link in the description down below and until the next one we hope you have a lovely day a blessed day be good be kind and we'll see you in the next bye